and welcome to Audiovisual Cultures, the podcast that explores different areas of arts and culture. I'm Paula Blair and I'm delighted to speak this time to music producer Moon Paul Print, who joined me over Skype. Huge thanks to members at patreon.com forward slash AV cultures and to everyone listening, sharing and engaging on social media. Listen to the end for ways of getting in touch and supporting the podcast. For now, do enjoy this chat with Moon Paw Print. Hello Will, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you Paula? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks. Yeah. So you're otherwise known as Moon Paw Print. Yep. Yeah. And so we're going to talk a bit about your work in producing music as Moon Paw Print. Um, uh, if it's OK, can I ask you about the name? Because I just really love it. It's, it's something <laughs> for me evokes a bit sci-fi. You know, it's mm-hmm. a bit spicy, but it's a bit cute as well. Is it OK yeah. if we ask you about that? Sure, sure. Um, I think it was it was a couple of years ago, like I had wrote this big list of names and stuff and I just like um I was kind of racking my brain trying to figure out like what would be a nice name to kind of use that alludes to something that makes you want to listen to music or whatever or like give something um like a vibe that's in space because people would say your stuff's very spacey and so forth and like I had a few names I wrote down I think like one was like space bar martini and things like this it's really <laughs> like random names and then there was one called um, I wrote down. It was like Moon Paw Print because I was like I love the moon. Like I've got this like just this love every time it's it's out, regardless of what shape it's in, particularly if it's full or whatever. It's not that I'm a werewolf. It's just like I think it looks really you know beautiful or whatever when it's in the night sky. And um, like I just I wanted to do something with the moon and Moon Paw Print came up and I was like that kind of works. And I was kind of thinking about what what would come to someone's mind if they if they hear it and part of me was like it's kind of like a space snoop dog or something <laughs> because it has that connotation but it's also like it's maybe something about the unknown because we have like the you know the, the footprint on the moon the sort of how um just kind of iconic that looked it was really cool to me like just having a footprint on like foreign land on a foreign like sort of planet was really interesting i was like if we find a paw print of some kind it would be really it would just cause a lot of questions it would be the yeah. unknown it'd be very alien it'd be very new and different so i was like yeah it kind of works and it just sort of it caught on i just didn't really think of anything else but yeah that's kind of the story behind yeah where the name came from i guess yeah. it, it, it evokes for me this joyful image of dogs frolicking around yeah the- <laughs> yeah yeah I like I kind of like to think about what animal would it be would it be a cat would it be a dog or would it be a wolf or like you know what paw is it is like originally it wasn't actually an animal I guess it was more so like thinking about like an alien type thing that I just uh-huh. could I could never picture but I was like maybe it's it's something of of an alien kind of thing so but I was a, I was a fan of like names like flying lotus and stuff like guys I was listening to at that at the time they just had just really creative names, you know, and just that made you it kind of like they were able to develop a world around their name and like their, like what they represented for their music kind of spoke with how they presented their art in a way. So it was like, it's kind of cool to have um, a sort of alias, I guess, to go under. So, yeah, it's that. Yeah, it's a nice, the, this idea that there's a trace of something mysterious yeah. on the moon. Mm-hmm. Um, great. So let's, uh, let's chat about your music and what kind of tunes and things that you make um so you've got a new album that you're going to be releasing in a couple of months is that right yes yes yeah. uh dreams of you it's coming out uh june 26th mm-hmm. i just dropped the single there on uh, last friday called take time tonight and it's the first single to the album there's another one uh single coming out next month and then i'll drop the album in june mm-hmm. in a sort of a debut sort of um independent album release mm-hmm. kind mm-hmm. of thing. yeah and there's something quite ethereal about the sounds that you make isn't there there's something about um I, when i listen to it it makes me think of it's strange i don't know if this is uh, my my music knowledge is not really up to scratch but it makes me think of very chilled out 
acid rave. Mm, <laughs> Don't mm. that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's an acid rave on Valium. Do you know? It's mm. just really relaxed, but it's still mm. got that, you know, that the sped up high pitched voices mm. and the repetitions and you know, the sort of the backwards sounds. Mm-hmm. But it's so chilled out, it's really relaxing. Mm-hmm. But it, it evokes images, you know, so I, I think there's quite a lot to try and get into there with what, mm-hmm. you, with what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But how would you describe the signs that you make, the signs oh. you Thank you for your comparisons and stuff. That's lovely. I, I love to oh, hear, really? like, <laughs> just it, how creative people get to describe the music. Like, yeah. uh, there's a, a, a good friend of mine, he's a poet called Colin Dardis, and he once uh-huh. described it as um, acid jazz and stuff. So it's like, it's oh, just yes. really cool to have like that sort of, it's it's always really creative names they give, and that's uh-huh. yeah, it's, it's really nice. Um, I guess I would describe it as, to me, I kind of see it as experimental hip hop, I guess, uh-huh. because okay. I come from that being my sort of main genre of what I'm influenced. I, I produce for like hip hop artists and stuff and R&B artists. So I'm kind of, I'm already in that realm, but I guess with the Moonpaw Prince solo project, it gave me opportunity to kind of blend a lot of genres together, like electronica. And mm-hmm. um, I just, I, I take that as a way of experimenting with just um, making sort of anything that comes out. So sometimes I just don't have a name for it. Sometimes it's just, I'll make, I'll sit down, I'll make something. I'll be like, I don't know how to describe this, but I know what it means to me or what kind of feeling I'm trying to get across. And mm-hmm. I guess my approach to the art and with the signs and stuff is just try and um, capture feeling and emotion and whatever I'm going through, I'll put it into a song, you know, and, and whatever um, the listener then interprets is is up to them. And I think there's sort of, there's beauty in maybe letting it go and being like, hey, this is yours now. This is like what mm-hmm. you make of it and what you want to call it and what you want to put it down as. And so subjective, I think, because people um, see it as so different. Each person sees it as so different and that... That to me is kind of a beautiful thing too because it means it's it's open i guess to the listener to make it into their own and um people say like they like to put music my music on when they're you know writing poems or maybe they nice. they put it in playlists when they're traveling or, or they're you know programming and stuff and i think that's cool too like i think it's cool to have like a real world application of music to a certain extent and i am just yeah happy to present whatever it is that they kind of need and you find that it kind of fits into people's lives in a different way where maybe the music is the focus where it's, they sit down and they put in their earphones and it's like they want to get immersed into a world you can do that or it can be something looming and sort of impending in the background that maybe it fills this purpose or that it's just i i give it to the audience and i'm like you know just do what you want mm-hmm. with it and i'm i'm happy with that i'm happy with just the fact that you take it you take the song and you like the song and you do what you won't think that's that's more than I could ever ask for with this mm-hmm. stuff. So yeah, just yeah. Yeah, great. Because um, I feel like it's we were before we started recording, we were talking a bit about film as well. And I think film is very much a medium where you bring so much of yourself to it, and I think that's what I'm getting from listening to your music and listening to you talking about it is that. I think you bring a fe- I think you bring something of yourself to it, and that's part of why it's quite hard to pin down how it sounds because it, it's so subjective. It'll sound whatever people are bringing from it, you know. Um, because I was thinking, so we're both originally from Belfast, and um, I w- when I started listening to your music, it made me think of the lineage that it may have come from and whether that's deliberate or not um possibly not if you're coming at it from a a hip-hop kind of background mm. but i think for me you know i'm just it's a very uh very quick very reductive run through but you know the lineage from punk that emerged mm. and then through to well punk died and then rave came up through from east belfast Mm. and spread like wildfire and the count you know there's always a, co- a counterculture that's mm. going on where people are just saying no to everything that's going on around them mm-hmm. and then we're now in this m- relatively more chilled out period of history um mm. in that place where music is 
blooming in a way it's mm. flourishing it's there's not so much the anger anymore but there's still urgency for things and I don't know it's a very half-baked idea but I think just because I, I'm hearing just something of rave but it's very different it's more mature it's less urgent it's more thoughtful I don't know if me saying that to you what do you how do you feel about that do you think that's nonsense or do you think there's something in that I, I think there's definitely something in it I think it's in the remnants of generations being passed on to an extent um, I think I was kind of lucky I was like born in 95 and mm -hmm. I think our generation it had this there was a certain amount of freedom that came with the internet and so forth to find different influences internationally and stuff and like around the internet around the globe you can tap into different artists from america and so forth and you're kind of you're getting into whatever you're interested in you've got that immediacy of what you want to listen to you can go and do it now with even like spotify and stuff there's like everything on there and i think coming with that there's came just a load of just you're exposed to everything and anything but the one thing you kind of kind of escape to an extent is where you come from because i feel that even subconsciously that's going to alter how you approach your work and how you kind of go about um, making stuff. And if I look back at my old, old stuff that was really based and routed when I was in living in Belfast and so forth, I mean, um, Glasgow now, I felt like it had maybe a more like darker undertone. Mm -hmm. I think that was because of seeing like I, cause it was a really nice generation to grow up in, but you did see the remnants of things mm -hmm. happening there and so forth. And like, there was still somewhat of a religious divide and so forth and in the country. And it just, I feel like it affects, even if you don't tap into it, and you're not even interested in it. It will affect you to a certain extent because that's going to bleed through, you know, from what stories you're hearing to what the current environment is. I think as artists, we all kind of reflect our environment. So, I felt that the more I kind of ventured out of Belfast, actually, not just in my searches online to find different music and different films and art forms, it felt like the more I would travel, the more eclectic my work became or whatever, the more I could tap into different things from um, different places and take the influence of this place with that place and, mm -hmm. and this scene with that scene and merge it all together in an experience. So I do think at the very bottom line, Belfast is there. and like you're seeing the resurgence like kind of beautifully now with um even the hip-hop scene in, in belfast and it's really cool like it's it's probably it's it's definitely it's all-time high of having an actual scene there there's a lot of like great artists and they're kind of thriving in this um uprise there's there's fans there's gigs happening and it seems like there's there's been a beautiful outcome from a dark period there's been a beautiful outcome to have um, music as a means of expression i think a lot of people have stories to tell and the remnants that still exist although we don't need to like address them directly and keep i guess repeating um the stories from those times we can find a more positive outlook on these things and like unify through music i think the music and, and film and so forth and these different art forms that are springing up in northern Ireland are bringing you know um communities together and we're just getting a more diverse overall like view on things because of that and i think it's beautiful to see international films now. Like, um, I'm a big fan of like Queen's Film Theatre in Belfast mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, it's always playing international films, and you you've got like you've got those choices, you know, um, to to kind of branch out. And it's I guess it's it's a better time than than ever to do so. So it's cool just to kind of see, yes, these things are factors, but as a collective society and like as artists and stuff in that society, we're like going forward, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then, because you mentioned that you, you're you in Glasgow now, and that's a fairly recent uh, yeah. development for you, isn't it? And it's, yeah. a, it's a really strange time. So, because um, I, you, you, I've listened to a, another podcast that you shared with me that you've been on very recently as well, that I'll share with um, followers as well. And um, you said you moved over just in September, is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Moved in September and like I've been here ever since pretty much. Yeah, uh, um, it's sort of like a two-year ordeal here the Glasgow. I'm like here doing like a postgrad yes. uh, in sound design and audiovisual practice at the University of Glasgow. So I'm just kind of, 
um, seeing out the time here and I've, I felt that you know the city's been very cool um, mm -hmm. very like mm -hmm. artistic and stuff really um, really creative place and it's very sort of inspiring I think um, in particular where I'm based here and, and partying and stuff is really cool yeah. um, of a place to be I think there's a lot of yeah a lot of cool things happening yeah here at the minute so with the with the sort of music you make is this was this something that you would mostly do online anyway or would you do gigs and things as well would you be part of a gig culture in normal circumstances not during a pandemic lockdown mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, the, mainly like all online all mm -hmm. online like I never got a gig in Belfast actually I had my like first proper gig was in Mississippi, was in like this place oh. called Offbeat, which is like a comic book store turned right. nightclub type thing. It was really like as a really cool sort of venue because it had, it sold records during the day and then it would hold like mm -hmm. showcases of music at night and so forth for films. So I went to like a film screen in there and stuff too. And it was just, mm -hmm. it was very, I remember being very nervous for that gig because so, something kind of impends on you when you're in Mississippi and you think like this is kind of the capital of music in the world you know with like blues music and stuff and it just felt like very there was a there was something to be said about pressure of like I hope I can kind of amount to what this audience wants but it ended up being a really cool sort of night and I had um, a good friend I met over there um, called Kai and his dad worked on Forrest Gump Wow, which is interesting yeah. so his dad worked for Cartoon Network at the time and he was I believe his dad was an artist and Kai followed kind of in his footsteps him and his brother they started up their own little company and stuff and they um, ended up at the time I had this like mixtape up on SoundCloud of just sort of instrumentals I had made and just different things of different genres I fused together and it was called Live by Night and there's sort of I guess it's interesting that conceptually it was an earlier version of Dreams of You to an extent. It was kind of exploring the nightscape and like signs and nocturnal signs and things of this nature. And I ended up showing that to him. I, I met him in class over there. I was like studying abroad and he really liked it. And he's like, we're going to like um, animate something to this. So they kind of made this like visual representation of the album and we showcased it live to the audience in Mississippi and it went it went really down really well. I think it was a really nice night and just as a first gig it was really um it was really interesting to like kinda of do it there and like ever since then like I think that was one of the moments where something kinda of clicked, something was kinda of locking in. I was like, yeah, there's something to really to be explored here and um I think they appreciated the sort of the outside perspective of music coming into Mississippi. Like the they're it's not that they're just exposed to say blues and so forth like that is at the cornerstone of music in mississippi but they've got such a wide variety of tastes there it's amazing like kind of how culturally rich mississippi is in that way so it's it was really cool like the kind of go there and there was an interesting backdrop at the time like this is just as donald trump is coming into elections and so mm -hmm. forth so there was it was really like as um as a time itself it was really really interesting place to be you know it was it was cool though it was really really fun to do that and yeah since then I've kind of been more open to doing gigs and live performances and yeah it's I've done a few since then and it's been mm -hmm. fun. Good it's great yes um and so have you have you been anywhere else on your travels before being um stuck? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and in, in the pandemic um Another place I kind of, I guess, of influence of like traveling to was um, China, which was fun. It was like a real kind of exposure to something really, really different to what I've always known uh -huh. growing up and so forth. It was everything was flipped and I was in this, um, I was in a place called Chengdu, mm. which was cool. And I actually remember going to a gig there at this place. And it was, it was really interesting because it was basically at the top of this, um, skyscraper there was this building that it had so much it had it was like multifunctional i think at the bottom it was like this like almost like post office place in the middle it was a hotel and then towards the top it was like there was a few floors that were just kind of like abandoned and at the very top there was a nightclub and you would just kind of go up there and you would kind of see the whole cityscape and the the loudness of the place like it was just crazy because you would like kind of go a floor below and you'll hear the the echoes of the party going on above you and just the um 
the, the music they were playing too was just it was remixes of western songs like i heard like frank ocean um i heard this like the song by frank i think it was um it was remixed i think it was thinking about you and they remixed it into this like club track and i just never heard anything like it and it was just very um it just really suited what they were doing they were like remixing all these popular songs but they were putting it in such a way that it was like it had um an atmosphere to it and it had such a like a cool thing going on and there was another like really secretive venue there that was really interesting it was called the dojo and i'd met a dj over there and he was telling me about this place and i was like this, this place sounds really interesting and he's like yeah it's out in the sticks and so like Chengdu's based in this like in, in as a series of rings the city goes and the further you go out of the city like you know the sort of more a bit more desolate it becomes but i'm sure it's been this is a few years ago i'm sure it's been a bit more built up and around the outskirts but um we, we ended up taking a taxi one night and we got this like vague address that was the, the you know defined this venue and we were like on in this taxi and like we were going to like it almost felt like the countryside and we we're going into all these like big houses and stuff and we're like we can't find this place you know like we we're about to give up and just go back with this big taxi fur and like um eventually like we just hear like this faint like kick drum like we're <laughs> really beating in the background we're like okay it must be down there so we like you know follow the music and we end up getting out of this venue and it was really really nice it was just this house that was in the middle of nowhere pitch black around you and like it was really lively inside there was like break dancers and stuff and i met um i was there with my good friend who was a b-boy which is like b-boys are like um break beat dancers to hip-hop and they oh, kind of follow a tradition of sort of like very rhythmic dances and so mm -hmm. forth and it's really cool kind of what they do and he he was a super interesting character he was called jackson mm -hmm. and he came with me and he was just there sort of break dancing in the middle of the mm -hmm. the dojo place and it was just it was really yeah. such a really interesting experience the music too and i think it inspired me massively like going mm -hmm. there and just seeing how quirky and unique you can kind of take mm -hmm. music so i guess that's what china taught me was because certain things are, are there's certain um, things in China where I went there to kind of do an internship. So I had this like sort of professional life there. I've worked at like a game company mm -hmm. and I would go there and that would be, you know, you're kind of, you're in your office, you're doing, um, you're doing your work. And then all my colleagues and stuff, they would go home, maybe play a game and stuff on their phone. Boom, they, they'll be, they come back in the next day. So I was, I was thinking like, is there more to explore in China? Is there an other side of it that's kind mm -hmm. of, lively like that is there a nightlife sort of thing and it turned out there there was quite a big one and it was it was sort of really interesting to kind of to go and explore and, and kind of find yeah little offshoot venues and stuff to go and, and see oh. um i suppose that there you you brought up um gaming there so you you've worked for gaming companies and um i heard you talk a bit about gaming tags and that sort of thing in the previous podcast that you did as well I was yep. just wondering um if you if that's something that um even just gaming itself and game music if that's something that is relevant to to the music that you produce now yeah I think yeah I think gaming is because I spent like a lot of my teenage years just as a gamer that would be my thing like I would just be kind of um, after school, go straight onto the game. I'd have like friends online who just play all day. And I think gaming kind of opened up something um, in me. Like with gamer tags, especially, like I just remember, like we would change or we'd have like these um, clans or whatever, these gamer clans that we'd just be like banding together with. And I'm kind of, I, I only recently i've sort of sort of like thinking back about that time and how it's reflecting things now like you kind of um not to kind of say like life is a game but like you kind of see like similarities between like the things you do back then when you go into a game you find your people you find like your little like um the people you like to play with and you go and you explore the games and everybody has their own thing and like recently like in recent years like i i like sort of got into um this thing called slang collective which is a series of artists and stuff and we um it's sort of multi-disciplinary like there's um animators there's straight up just artists there's um 
another friend of mine is called Icarus Prince. Like we make music together under social interaction and so mm-hmm. forth. And it's just they they design clothes and stuff too. And it's kind of cool. Like I'm seeing like um, a bit of similarity between that and like the things going on now, especially with um, I don't know, like everything being, I guess. Um, categorized to an extent like we're all in these like categories of what we're interested in everybody has a little realm mm-hmm. and it kind of feels like I don't know I've always seen it like as something something to be said about it being similar to the setup of gaming and how it works you know like little pockets of, of okay. interest here and there and everybody having their own thing and like it's kind of beautiful when you do get that crossover of things mm-hmm. and you do get like yeah, when you explore, maybe it's like exploring a new game, like you've got so much more to jump into. And mm-hmm. yeah, I guess I'm kind of, I'm kind of interested in that in the, in the sense of like maybe eventually exploring the different art forms to mm-hmm. an extent, you know, like because mm-hmm. I was having the conversation with a friend and we we're kind of talking about how you don't need to kind of box yourself in as, okay, I just make music or I just make films and whatnot. Like maybe it's, it's complementary to your work to kind of, Mm-hmm. dive into a different art form and maybe okay spend some time trying to make a short film and trying to do this and like how that maybe can inform your um creation process behind your music because i think everything's connected in that way like everything's kind of um i think everything informs each other and everything is is you can kind of see with like music releases now like how things have a music video and like the promotion has maybe a visual rule out too and um childish gambino if you're familiar with him or donald glover like he, oh, yeah. he he's really good at i'm a massive fan of his albums called because of the internet and with that like he he decided like we just don't need to release an album we can have like sort of um extra curricular things to be involved with it like he developed like a film script mm-hmm. that you can read along as you're like listening to the album and I think he, he was able to like craft like an audio world really exist in. You're like kind of able to, it's more than just interpreting the album. You've got his interpretation too. Then you have like that's going on interpersonally in his lyrics, but then a deeper layer is he's actually wrote a, a story behind it, which in, like is just a, just a real interesting sort of like mm-hmm. dimension. It's, it's like you can exist in that album for a long time. And I remember spending like, a year or so just digest that album over and over and just how intricate it was and how I think that interest has got me into like maybe like trying to push more visually and stuff and trying to like do do more things visually because I just don't think you need to just do audio to um guess like create immersion you can you can go deeper if you want to if you choose to yeah the connections between and I suppose not even just restricted to just visual elements, but what about movement and light and sensation and you know feeling? What can you evoke? From, you know, pull from within someone, you know. And um, there's not really any limits anymore. It feels because of the mm. technology at hand. Yeah, massively, massively. And you you look at things to me like I'm. I'd be really interested sort of in looking at dance and stuff at the minute and just like okay. observing how like to me like i i went to this um event like two months ago or so um with my girlfriend it was like this pole dance and showcase and we kind of went and like observed like how much i i kind of like see dancing as like the ultimate artistic statement of things because it's so like revealing mm-hmm. to your like it's it's like the dancer comes sheds their soul on the mm-hmm. stage like they get everything they want to say out in the dance and the articulations and the movement. And it's all so like precise and calculated and like the fluidity and stuff to me, just like, is very like similar to music, but the honesty of the dance is that it's right there. The humans right there and they're just, they're doing their thing. And like, for me, like I can kind of hide behind things as like, as a guy who does music, like I can put out something and just have my artwork here. And like, that's the song. And mm-hmm. although I'm, maybe I'm doing the same thing of like taking stuff from my soul and putting it there. Like mm-hmm. the issue is like, I'm not like, I'm not on the line as much as a dancer. And even my friend, um, Jackson, I was telling you about in China who did like break dancing, like he would just, he would give it as everything. And he would like, Mm-hmm. We'd be in like a club or whatever, and people would just be like turning heads and looking at him. He'd just like have this circle around him. He would just, 
I guess like he would he would be so um in sync with the music it'd be like this dude is just losing himself to it and he's just uh-huh. he, he, like he, he was describing his process and stuff to me and how like it's just um like just he gets teleported somewhere and I kind of feel that way musically sometimes like you just you kind of get maybe not that it's escapism but it's more so like you're getting into a really true realm of yourself Uh, whether it be like spiritual or you know you're just kind of getting some absolute like Mm. true version of you that has no um there's your inhibitions your insecurity all that is like kind of like to the side it's like this is me you do your thing and then it's it's like it can be a beautiful statement and i think like dance is that and it'd be kind of cool maybe in the future to like incorporate like dance movements i can't dance myself i'd be terrible like a dancing but i feel like the work with dancers would be amazing it would be like really like oh, I think yeah, really man. inspiring you know like really yeah. really cool to do and sort of um create tracks for i would love that i'd love to like kind of get into that mm-hmm. going on you know and having live shows maybe wow yeah that would be cool yes oh plans for the after times <laughs> mm. yes yes <laughs> yes um, I thought that takes us quite nicely to the question of collaboration because you do already collaborate with various people. So you've mentioned, is it Icarus Prince before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you have some visual collaborators as well. Would you like to talk us through a bit more of that sort of area? Sure. Uh, the, like So visually, I've got, um, for the Dreams of You album, there's a good friend of mine, he's a South Korean artist, he's called um, Don Kim, and he is doing the, the sort of still image artwork which um i've just been sort of blown away by the stuff he's able to kind of create where i'll just send him a song and like within like two days he's got something that's really it it sort of takes me even though it it doesn't move it's not like any um it's not animated or anything it's a still piece of artwork like Mm -hmm. the layers and stuff he's able to kind of evoke in there and like the feelings like Mm -hmm. i kind of sit with his art and like over time stuff kind of unfolds I'm like oh this is what he meant by putting maybe this here and like I kind of like to deconstruct his work Mm -hmm. um a bit so I'm like a massive fan of what he's able to do yeah Um, and he's been very like helpful and just preparing the the visual side of the album of of like yeah for the single releases and the album artwork itself he was he, he did and um yeah worked across the board with a lot of like sort of um visual people like my friend Chris as well he goes under raw poly for his stuff like he has animated some videos I've posted on Instagram and stuff and he's like okay. he, he he's like just a really good animator and he, he's into photography and stuff now and he's like he's doing great and just sort of exploring himself visually and and my friend Ando who's a filmmaker who was on the podcast too yeah um, he um, big fan of his sort of films his short films are just I think very I think we're talking about how our environment informs things earlier on. Like, I think he's great at just capturing, like, um, the environment of Ireland and so forth. And just mm-hmm. there's something very um, – he has a really nice new approach to traditionalism, I think, of filmmaking too. Like, it seems very – it seems almost retro, but it's, like, newly informed to an extent mm-hmm. and has, you know, deeper sort of, like, layers to peel back on and – um, I've got a friend um, called Law. He goes under Arts Advocate UK and so forth. And he's um, he's designed the artwork for the social interaction stuff, which is the stuff I do with Icarus Prince. And it's it's he's sort of drawn us and he's putting us on um, these sort of these backdrops that are kind of minimal and so forth. And they're really cool because the social interaction music is all very conceptual too. Like we're releasing this thing called Earth EP and this sort of concept is to reflect sort of the current atmosphere of earth mm-hmm. and we've worked on it for like two years but it happens now that the pandemic and stuff's going on but like this might be an interesting time to sort of release it so we did the artwork for that and yeah how else am i missing there's there's maybe um <laughs> there's so much people who are doing visuals that are, that are like great at the minute it's just it's really cool to work yeah with them my friend tom uh that does frontier pictures um and he's based in belfast like he shot some stuff for me um over the christmas period i went back to visit belfast and like he came and we shot some cool reflection shots and stuff that maybe can be used in the kind of closer to the dreams of you promotion i'd like to kind of include them um but yeah i've just been 
kind of across the board, just open to anybody who like kind of wants to collaborate. Because I think everybody has something to mm -hmm. like. We can all work on, you know. Like I think we all have um, abilities that the network. Like for me, it's not always about doing the soundtrack to someone's film or like producing the song. Like I might do the sound design for something, or mm -hmm. like I'm. I love working with like video game. Mm -hmm. makers you know with this design and like little petite signs that just fit into your game and like they kind of like get into the mind state of like the the atmosphere in the world of the game and trying to like take a sound and really sort of maybe create a sound from scratch by synthesizing or just take a, a sound of recording and being like how can i fit this into your world and maybe that's the extent of the collaboration it doesn't always need to be sort of yeah. you know you do the main soundtrack or you do this it can always just be subtle mm. things but then you learn so much from them too you know you learn, you learn quite a lot mm. that's a really good point to raise i think as well because i think it's one of the most probably the most underrated areas of filmmaking or maybe game making as well mm -hmm. um is sound design and the intricacies of that the complexities of that because it's one of those things where you notice it if it's not right you notice it if it's not yeah. right. but to get it so right it's invisible mm -hmm. it's such a skill and we don't appreciate it enough i think i agree i think it's one of those things really under look like if it's not there it's you can really tell can ruin a film you know mm -hmm. like it's just the, the beautiful thing is the ultimate compliment for a sign designer is you don't notice it yeah. you don't notice the sign design because it means everything went smoothly yeah. um i think that's sort of nice and particularly it's like i remember kind of first when i first got into sign design the i didn't realize how in-depth it is there's so much to it you know like from mixing approaches to just understanding and art like when you first get into it, the way you kind of sense audio is completely different. Like you kind of develop your range of listening over time. And the, the amount of years you put in, the more you like, you start to hear like, oh, there's a stereo space audio exists in. Oh, this is what mono sounds like compared to stereo. And it's like, you kind of go in blind, I like to say, when you first start, because things are a bit less, like you're just used to listening. Like there's, I know there's, um, I learned this actually in uni there's different types of listening you know like um there is i guess the way i would describe it is like just proactively listening of just sitting down and kind of like trying to analyze okay what is going on in this piece and like you're really like you might close your eyes you're just really in tune with everything and you're listening for every fine detail mm -hmm. but a lot of people will just listen normally where it's just you're just kind of like you're engrossed maybe in a film yeah. you're so caught up in the visuals and what's going on in your mind with the visuals that the audio is just sort of complimenting you but if we took the audio away of course we wouldn't have the same effect of the film i think like horror films like they survive off like their jump scares especially like they follow that same sort of formulaic approach of like a rise and then like a you know like a real moment that can capture you you know but if you did that visually like it's yeah, I think it's like a connection between the two, visual and audio, to really get a, a strong output of that thing. Yeah. 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 So, um, do you want to do you want to get into your upcoming album a bit more? Because we just sure. sort of mentioned that a little bit at the start. But is there anything more detail that you want to, I suppose, preview it in a way for people? Okay, I guess I can kind of like talk about the concept of like dreams of you. Yeah, that'd be great. Right. Yeah, because um, all, all that stuff. I think it was like when I first got to Glasgow, the I, I started having these like really intense dreams. Oh. Uh, it's kind of, kind of a funny story, like because when I first got here, um, moved into a place, and I live right beside um, a supermarket. So anytime oh. I go over, when I first moved in, it was September. The weather was was nice, and mm -hmm. like cherries and stuff were reduced everywhere. So I just have like loads of cherries, and I just be eating cherries like mad mad amounts of cherries and i didn't realize this but um cherries have this like natural chemical called melatonin and wow. it, like and partly it, like it's like studies show that it increases the intensity and the vividness of your dreams wow. so i like one of those like sensitive body types so i was eating cherries like not knowing like why do i have these like, crazy dreams <laughs> going on at the minute and i would just have like a whole week of them and it'd be so like just so weird but also so like very like um i guess kind of cool because i've always loved the idea of dreams like back in when i was doing my undergrad like i i like to like like um 
lucid dream if you've heard of it um i i was like getting into like practicing it and stuff and i had like a lot of fun trying to the idea of like controlling your dreams because uh-huh. i it came out of like reading this thing one time where someone said like we spend so much of our life in our dreams you know it's a shame that that just goes away like in our sleep that that time just goes away and like i don't think it does i think we equally live in our dreams we equally like have a place there that is important to like understand or exist in and like we we still don't know a lot about the dream state and like what informs it and like different sort of um people in psychology have opinions and and sort of like takes on this like i was looking into like carl Jung and stuff and freud and they have there's like dream dictionaries and stuff what does this mean can we deconstruct it and i'm really interested in the idea of the subconscious like kind of talking to us in our dreams and sometimes if things are going on in life like i'll have a dream and i'll wake up and i'll be like okay that's what i need to do or this is what i need to change or like my subconscious is always like kind of like telling me like to do this or that in the dreams i feel like like things that we kind of underestimate in our day-to-day because we're caught up in our sort of our daily loop Mm -hmm. the dream can kind of take us from that and it can give us a new perspective Mm -hmm. on things and and then like make us maybe make positive changes to our life and stuff and i was like it's really interesting that dreams exist for this purpose i feel like there's, there's we can we can give them um a real nice sort of undertone in our life and like help us inform our decisions and and improve our lives to an extent so since kind of from that time i've been really interested in dreams and it just so happened that like come to glasgow moving and just kind of getting more exposure to having dreams and like with this lockdown there was a there was like a lot of cases of people having lockdown dreams they called it you know just intense dreams because we're not getting the visual exposure of our day-to-day life of going outside and seeing things happening in society we're confined to our rooms Mm -hmm. so i feel like that was another sort of urge to like Mm -hmm. continue the dream exploration and dreams of you is that it's like it's a sonic um like response to dreams to my dreams i guess but also the dreams i've had for like years and sort of the trying to capture the dream space and like the the idea of of being because I see, to my, to my personal experience, dreams can be very, um, they can either be very direct and up close and personal where everything feels so real, or they can be very, almost very numb and like you're disattached, but they're, you're floating almost and you're very, um, it's very whimsical. Like I, I kind of wanted to kind of explore both sides of that and like try and capture what it's like to be in a dream-like state in the album. And maybe that could inform the listener to, maybe engage in the album more so towards night and like see how that yeah. would go down yeah gosh um i suppose you, you're talking about all those things and i'm think i'm trying to think through if it's reminding me of films that i've seen that attempt to do the same thing but visually as well and um he's not somebody i uh, tend to encourage but it's, it's i'm not a fan of this person but stan mm. brackage she used to try to make hypnagogic films so films where you were just as you were falling asleep that moment of um he i think he called it closed eye vision so when you close mm. your eyes but you because you can still see stuff you mm. can see colors and shapes and things mm. moving around and mm. you can tell what what if it's light or not and you know yeah. so he tried to capture that in his experimental films quite a bit mm. and a lot of his films were trying to explore or push what are the vi- what are the visual things that happen in dreams you know and lots of overlaying and superimposition and double exposures and all sorts of things um and it was just making me think because his films are usually completely silent there's no sound at all in them and it was making me think could your music maybe your album I suppose like a bit of a dark side of the moon type mm-hmm. thing could it accompany mm-hmm. do you know if people watched it with things that mm-hmm. they, with movies that they put on silent or whatever animations that they had on mm-hmm. silent you know it's something mm-hmm. that could be mm-hmm. a kind of possibility for people when it actually gets out into the world for sure that'd be great 
that's again it's just whatever you want to make of it like yeah. take it whatever way and like yeah i for me like i, I imagine like would this be an album where like you're kind of you're almost sort of sleeping or because i i used to do like a lot of commuting where i'd be on a bus for two hours yeah. and i would just listen every time i'd be like okay i'm listening to a new album mm-hmm. and i would just sometimes close my eyes and then just be sort of taken away and then you open your eyes you're there and the mm-hmm. album just got you through that and you just you've you've almost went into a different world so like i kind of like that idea of um exploring what it would mean to make an immersive world you can jump into and yeah. for me always that seems like it's a nighttime and i'm not sure why and i think that kind of coincides with the moon thing too and like the previous work of life by night and stuff it seems that i find a lot of like i find the night very poetic to an yeah. extent i feel like it's a very because it's a it's a time for reflection it's a time sometimes for solitude it's a time for exploration too of like what you want to do that you couldn't get done in the day so i've always found the night as like freedom to an extent and yeah. i like to work at night and stuff and i just felt mm-hmm. like this could be an album a night sort of nocturnal album and yeah. there's a there's a guy from there's a really good producer i always mention him like burial like they call his um they have a term for his music and it's like night bus music like you're riding a bus at night and you're mm-hmm. kind of going it's like kind of melancholic but it's really like immersive and you're just engrossed in in the feeling and it's he's really good at capturing a lot and like yeah i think i think i've been inspired by him to an extent as well by the night time and like exploring it sonically but yeah. doing it sort of way of whatever my interpretation it is because everybody has their own interpretation i guess and their own thing which is the the subjectivity of I guess what we're talking about when they do get the album, what whatever they do with it. Like, I guess I would just like to know sometimes, like just out of curiosity, like sometimes you wonder because like on the Spotify thing, you can see the Spotify artist app and it tells you who's listening throughout the world and so forth. Like you get like different cities and countries and like, like I learned like some new countries I didn't know before through that. I'm like, there's someone <laughs> listening here. And it's like, sometimes I like to wonder like, what were they doing when they're listening to the song? Like, is it just... I don't know like just out of curiosity like what what would that inspire you to do or what is it in the background for or what is it and i guess that's just something i have to like be at peace with and never know and that's a beautiful <laughs> thing too it's just like whatever it is it is but it's kind of cool like things are going on outside of you but like there's maybe a part of you somewhere that you'll never go in the world because like and this comes from like this goes to filmmakers too or any artist who like puts stuff online like people are absorbing it from different places mm-hmm. under different circumstances and then like they get to see you when they never would have anyway you know so it's kind of it's kind of interesting the idea that like you're putting stuff out to the world and stuff's going on mm-hmm. when your music playing out there and like whatever yeah. it is it's, it's kind of kind of interesting yeah so who's painting to it who's chilling out to it Mm. who is it just keeping company with you know like that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. yeah it's a lovely Mm -hmm. idea Mm -hmm. yeah um do you have anything else you want to to talk about is there anything i haven't covered that you're really burning to talk about or anything i think yeah i think i'm really happy with what we discussed i think that's the, the dreams of you thing was like the, the, yeah. amount, the collaborators and stuff just to shout them out i think yeah yeah um yeah it was really cool really cool well um moon paw print will thank you so much for your time it's been so lovely learning more about your music and um i'm gonna keep an eye out for your album dropping in june we'll make sure we share it on everything um do you want to quickly go through your socials for people to find you sure uh it's just moon, i think i'm just mainly on instagram it's just at moon paw print on yeah. there and then moon paw print with spaces on all streaming platforms mm-hmm. uh yeah so that's Thank where you can you. find the music and so forth but paul i really appreciate you have me on the podcast here really um big fan of this Aww. podcast and what it represents so it was really cool um thank you so much it was lovely um yeah. chatting and yeah it was great thank you that's brilliant thanks so much you've been listening to audiovisual cultures with me paula blair and my very special guest moon paul print 
This episode was recorded and edited by Paula Blair and the music is Common Ground by Airtone, used under a 3.0 non-commercial Creative Commons license. Episodes release every other Wednesday, with early release when available to Patreon members. I'm also very grateful for donations to liberapay.com forward slash PEA Blair to support my writing as well as making the podcast. Be part of the conversation with AV Cultures on Facebook and Twitter and AV Cultures Pod on Instagram. Wash your hands, stay home if you can, and be excellent to yourselves and to each other. Thanks so much for listening. Catch you next time. Yeah.